Turn a corner in your local supermarket and you'll be inundated with shelves upon shelves of soap and detergents. With so many versions of each product to choose from, from extra strength to antibacterial and fresh scented, consumers may need a crash course. So here goes. The craft of soap making began in Europe around 700 AD, but soap remained a luxury item for another thousand years. That's when a French scientist discovered how to make inexpensive lye using table salt. People also made soap at home by boiling wood ashes with animal fats. By the 1900s, the growing soap industry finally found ways to make mild and fragranced products. And in 1916, a German scientist invented the first synthetic detergent. This factory produces mostly industrial-use liquid and powdered detergents. It uses salt as a filler in its powdered varieties. Fillers add volume, making a product less concentrated. This will be a powdered detergent for cleaning and degreasing cement floors. Workers add colorant, then surfactant, a substance that creates foam, the vehicle for lifting away dirt. Next, they pour in pine oil, a disinfecting agent that also adds fragrance. Now the cleaning agent, the chemical sodium tripolyphosphate. It's essential to mix all the ingredients thoroughly. This ensures the chemicals are evenly distributed throughout the cleaner. The last ingredient is a chemical called sodium metasilicate. It boosts the mixture's alkaline level. This particular cleaner needs high alkalinity to be effective. The factory packages its powdered cleaners, such as this laundry soap, in large plastic buckets. Automated equipment weighs, then pours in the appropriate amount. The filler in liquid cleaning products is water. To produce liquid hand soap, the factory first adds citric acid. This creates the mild acidity needed to get the most out of the surfactants. The soap contains three different types of surfactants. A specific formulation designed by the company chemists to optimize the soap's cleaning power. To give the soap a pearl luster, the company uses a cocktail of chemicals, though the exact ingredients are a guarded secret. The factory makes most of its liquid soap from this same base mixture. However, the colors and fragrances vary. For coloring, it uses powdered pigments dissolved in hot water, then poured in. This batch of soap will be pink, so a rose-scented fragrance is used. Then a preservative is added to prevent the proliferation of bacteria should the soap be exposed to a dirty environment. Finally, workers adjust the viscosity by adding a powdered thickener. If the liquid soap is too runny, it'll leak out of the dispenser. After 15 minutes of mixing, the soap is ready and the lab analyzes a sample, assessing its physical and chemical properties. When the batch gets the OK, it proceeds to the packaging machine. This soap is going into dispenser bags made of plastic film. The machine first inserts a valve. It heat seals the film, forming the bottom of the bag. Then it injects 800 milliliters of soap. Next, it simultaneously heat seals the top of the bag and the bottom of the next one. It cuts them apart, releasing the finished bag to a conveyor belt below. After checking for leaks, workers insert a spout that controls output from the valve. This ensures the dispenser will release only a few grams of soap per push. Elsewhere in the factory, an automated machine called the pressure filler pumps dishwashing liquid into plastic bottles. An overflow and weight control device ensures the right fill level. The 
The next machine applies a twist cap with pull-out spout. Then it's off to labelling. The bags of liquid hand soap, meanwhile, go into special boxes designed to slip right into soap dispensers. Now don't forget to wash your hands after you've flushed.